biggest and most stacked card that they've ever put together. I'm locked in, bro. I'm locked in on everything. I'm, I want to make them pay for anything. Dana said it to me. I'll never forget it. He's like, this dude, give him a couple more fights. He might, he might be the next champ. Where does that confidence come from? That dog, that I'm not going to lose mindset come from? Alex is a two, he's a two division glory champion. If I don't get hurt, you're definitely not a two division champion. Cutting your own promo right here. I mean, you're getting it. Some drills, I make them even harder on myself. I want you to feel all that emotion. I, I don't doubt myself at all. I remember the first time I got tired of the fight and I was like, oh shit. Used to be able to spear people in the head and knock them out and it was like, Celebrate. Yeah. The Minshew's been in there the last couple weeks. Behind. Legend. Love that guy. The opponent. If I'm at my best, then it doesn't matter what they do. DC, come out of retirement. I like to whip your ass. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. What, should be, what, should, uh, what should Alex be worried about from Jamal Hill? Walk up in it like, yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit like, I'm really him, oh God. Walk up in it like, yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit like I'm really him. All right, y'all. Welcome back to The Rush. It's your boy, Max Crosby. My co-host, Brogan Roback, Darian Terrell. We are recording from the Palace at Crockford's in the Resorts World, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. It's so unbelievable. Again, today, obviously, we do not have our boy, Dustin Creel. Family emergency. Um, he will not be with us for the next couple episodes. So pray for our boy. He's doing well, but pray for his family and everybody involved. So, um, yeah. Max, so the banning of the hip drop tackle became a new rule? Ass. Oh, you already took my question. What are your thoughts on it? Ass. Why? Okay, it's the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Catches the ball. Clock's expiring, or it's a big third down, whatever. Going near the end zone. You have to pull somebody back to prevent them from going in the end zone. You throw a flag and then put it on the one and let him run the ball in and win the game or he just made the greatest tackle to save them from scoring yes how can you can't do that you better I hope agree. you're playing the seahawks you know what i'm saying yeah I ain't giving it to marshawn <laughs> exactly no I, so that's my point i don't like i i understand what they're doing because on the sideline and shit like that but they need to be very selective when they call it because if it's not egregious you can't just call that shit because yeah. the whole point of football is attack of yeah. defense is to tackle them yeah so if you ban a type of tackling, there's only so much you can do to control yourself, especially if you're preventing someone from getting a first down or a touchdown. Or, I mean, that's insane to me. So that being said, do you feel like most of the rule changes in the NFL, do they serve only the offense? Of like you look at pass interference, that uh, was a huge deal too. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course it does. And why do you think that? I mean, I, think, well, I know why. There's but. the safety rules and TV views. Yeah. <laughs> People want to see touchdowns. But at the end of the day, I mean – the game has changed. The game's changed. The health is a real thing. People don't want dudes dying on the field, like for real. Best abilities of There's guys back in the day who used to be able to spear people in the head and knock them out, and it was like celebrate. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's you a badge can't. Of honor. Yeah, it's yeah. So it's like no, don't you're not coming <clears throat> over the middle. They're not letting that shit. But nowadays, yeah. guys are just running crossing routes across the field and getting eighteen hundred yards a year. Yeah, you can be one sixty and play play slot. One hundred percent. So. Yeah, I think I the mean, toughest part is is what we're gonna see. We saw it even last year that you're starting to put too much responsibility on the game on the refs. Hundred percent, right? they have to look and like refs get a bad bad rap, right? Because but there's so many different things now that they have to look out and call. Yeah, yes. and now it's like it's the refs' fault. But at the end of the day, is it really? They should be there, but not there. But they have to sense. use an, a, their individual discretion to just be like. Mm, that was close. I'm not going to call the drop tackle. Yes. You know what I mean? Or yeah. I'm not going to call that as a roughing the passer because Max slapped the, the leg of a quarterback. Yeah. You get what I mean? I hate yeah. that shit. So it's like they just have they have to use their discretion, and the more that you have to do that, it's going to be hot one game, cold the next. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So totally. that being said then, from the defense side of the ball, Max, what is a rule, ch like a rule change you think that the NFL should possibly make just from you playing ball and being on the defensive side, there's got to be something that just annoys the shit out of you that they're able to get away with, or you just think in general. I'm putting you on the spot here, but football is football. You're not gonna. There's certain things that you just can't avoid on a football field. You got to do is running 100 miles an hour, flying around. Yeah. Your whole objective is to stop them from you know gaining yards. There's certain things like guys run across the middle. You'll see them hit it, get hit in the chest, but it, it's somewhere near their head, and they'll still throw the flag. Yeah. It's like you can't do shit like that. It's got to be, I, I feel like the main thing is they got to make it, it's got to be egregious. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially even roughing the passer. 
someone gets pushed into the quarterback's legs, they'll throw a flag for roughing, which is crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't control that. So I think things like that need to be it need to, it needs to be a little gray area. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll like tell you, you what, said, even though it's hard at the same time it's like unless it's egregious that's you, the only yeah, time you, gotta, you should call you, it. You'd like to think that they wait these calls like hey, this yeah. is a rule that's enforced but just like driving and not wearing your seatbelt. 100%. You're not going to get pulled over every single no, time. No, if you're going 8 over, don't but pull if me. If you up. need a reason to pull someone over, you're yeah. going to say it's a Definitely. seatbelt. Definitely. 100%. One thing I'd like to see change and it's not even a rule really, but it's I think they should be able to go back and review a penalty like the maybe there's some that you can't hours. but like that would take seven hours, hours it could take game. but then you only get to do one a game i don't know but there's yeah. got to be something where it's like hey let's review it's crunch time two minutes left in the game yeah. you know then you should be able to review a challenge or a, a penalty i'm sorry yeah, like there should be a way to just look back because how many times you see it and you're like he didn't even touch him yeah so, or, so you're just even yeah. even the scale like yeah you're, you're like make the, the right out. call uh-huh. like in the moment of the time not come back afterwards and say Oh, hey guys, oops. yeah, we really f***ed that one up. Yeah, yeah. you know, like no, you just blew this. T- this team now has moved down in the rankings and the standings, and they have to battle their way up because you blew a call. Yeah, that's that's actually a good point because we talked during the season when mm-hmm. there was a lot of controversial calls that were made. Yeah. Like, how do you hold a ref accountable? Yeah, like how do you hold their crews? And they said like, hey, they're not in the playoffs, et cetera. But like, yeah. I think that's a good checks and balances in, yeah. in the moment in the in the game. Yeah. Hey. That's bullshit. I'll lose a timeout if I'm wrong, but that's yeah. that's egregious. Yes. Yeah. You get one. Yes. Yeah. So, Max, let's move on. Let's move to the autumn wind. Hmm. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of new faces um, in the building, a lot yeah. of new signings. Yeah. Uh, just what has it been? What's the adjustment like in there with the new guys, um, kind of getting them to buy into the Raider way? Just what's been the feel with the new guys in the building? Um, it's been dope. Um, we start OTAs Monday. Okay. Um, so... We'll have everybody there, um, but there's been, I mean, Minshew's been in there the last couple of weeks. Nice. Legend. Love that guy. We're going to talk to him in a bit. We're going to talk we to him. We saw him on FaceTime today. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Dude's a legend. Minshew, the guys, D-line, everyone's been, we've been getting after You him. like the additions? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen Christian yet. I'm going to see him. We'll see him very soon. The best teams are all, like, you have a sixth sense. Mm-hmm. You're around them. You know exactly how this person is. Like Christian, for example, he's going to be here. Me and him are going to be working every single day. All right, how do you like the rush? Where do you like the lineup? What do you like to do in this situation? And you just bounce ideas off each other. And I think that is the most important, critical thing. And then on top of it, off the field, during the season, you got to keep that shit rolling. Mm -hmm. Because we're around each other OTAs. It's cool when you don't have games and it's easier to be around each other. But when it's the season, you're fucking tired and do whatever, but we're doing D-line dinner. You know what I mean? That's every Thursday. We're going to a restaurant. We're spending time with each other, meeting each other's families. And that's when you have that real bond and real trust that directly translates in the game. Because I can go and somebody, or Malcolm, for example. I'm always on Malcolm or Tyree or any guy like that. I'm not coming at them in a personal way. It's do your job. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can talk to somebody like that and have the respect if you have a real relationship. You know what I mean? I know Malcolm's dad. Malcolm's dad's like, you know what I mean? Been in his corners since day one. He's always asking through Malcolm, hey, how are you feeling? What was your, you know, yeah. is he healthy? Blah, 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 blah. Like, we have that type of connection. For so sure. anything I say to Malcolm or he says to me is never personal because we're all trying to accomplish the same thing. So, yeah, I think that's, I mean, the most critical part about, you know, being being a great team. Oh, yeah. Do you have any, like, off-season plans with the guys? Like, you mentioned quarterbacks. So, like, when I was in Pittsburgh, Ben would take uh, – the receivers to his place at somewhere secluded. Don't know. Don't Weird. have the address. Uh, yeah. Didn't you know? Didn't get the invite for that one, D. Yeah, uh, really but cool. do you have any plans like that with the guys? Because you're a captain, right? So um, is that something you want to integrate or start doing moving forward? Take them on a trip. Take them to go work out somewhere for a week. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I just bought a new place in Summerlin, so we got like basically. I mean, y'all saw it, but. Yeah. We're building a whole facility, basically, um, at the house. So Come we on. do OTAs Monday through Thursday, and Fridays are basically they're technically off. Yep. But I mean, Fridays are going to be at the crib. We have the field, we have the basketball court, pool, the whole deal, and just have the guys over and just work, bond, spend time together, and uh, get closer. Especially before we get to camp, especially the new guys too. Like, yeah. we have a lot of familiar faces coming back, but guys like Christian. Um, even offensive guys, like even Minshew and all those dudes, like I want all of us to spend time yeah. together because yeah. at the end of the day, we're all relying on each other to win. So, um, yeah, I definitely plan on having the guys on Fridays at the uh, at the crib once everything is 
the crib. Yeah, Let's call it the compound. The compound. Yeah. 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 They're gonna be over on the west wing. Yeah. They're gonna be getting the. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna be getting the, the the hoops in, and then you can go outside, and they'll, they'll get go to the field work. Yeah. yeah. Get some pass rush. Yeah. yeah don't worry, ass. sir. My butler will bring your drink here in a minute. Uh, <laughs> like Brogan dude. walks out. Yeah, it's yeah. me. Hey guys. What's up, boys? One, one thing I can clothes. promise you is you're getting great service here. That's yeah. one thing for sure. Hundred percent. Well, let's uh let's address the elephant in the room really quick because. The draft is upcoming. Yeah. What's the buzz around the team with the draft? Because players, business is business as usual, right? Like you yeah. really don't focus that much on the draft, but you're a captain. You have a lot of say in a lot of things. But just your thoughts on just the team, the buzz around them, and then what do you think, if it's okay for me to ask, is going to happen coming specifically first round with the Las Vegas Raiders? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all speculation until draft day hits. So. Yeah. Obviously, you got you go on Twitter. All the GMs all these, on there. The Twitter GMs are going to be like, "We're getting this guy at this pick. It guaranteed is a perfect fit." But at the end of the day, nobody really knows. Yeah. And even the coaches right now and the GM, like all them, they don't know until the draft day comes. Unless you have the ring. number one pick. Yeah, their phone could ring and it changes everything. Yeah, I mean, they, people could trade picks. Yep. There can be a certain guy taken that you don't expect the pick before you, and you're like, oh. <laughs> Now what are we going to do? Yep. Yeah. So you have – obviously they have a plan. They got their board and, you know, break down in, in certain scenarios and situations, but you really don't know until you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, we got the right people in the building, and I think it's going to be very interesting. We'll see what happens. I really don't know. Yeah. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm like a kid when it comes to this shit. I like being involved. I like knowing. I bother the GM, bother <laughs> yeah. AP, bother Mark. I'm like, what the f*** are we doing? Hell yeah. I want to know. Are, are you going to um, be the – the the very you're gonna put the, the the badge of honor on. I'm gonna be the first text to our first pick. Oh, I'm, every year I'm like that. Yeah, I text every guy we draft. As soon 100%. as you get, yeah, yeah, every dude. Who's, from who's first your go-to to person? Round. Give me their number. Who? Who's your go-to person where you're like, hey, give me their number? Oh, Daniel Leader. Leader out of all. Daniel Leader. Sorry, Daniel mm -hmm. Leader. Dan is a man. Yeah. He mean he's been in the trenches with me since day one. I love that. He's always around the building, just making shit operate, and he is immediately he's the first guy to have. The the number but at the same time i'll just like if we draft some guy i'll just DM go to their dm oh, nice. if they don't respond i'll be like shoot me their number so yeah. you know I mean? max slides and dms is basically what we're yeah. getting from this that's, all right. yeah. that's, that's a good okay. team that, that's what it takes to be the leader of the team. that's what a captain does yeah you know? it's, it's guys does it change your opinion if they don't follow <laughs> you already huh does it change your opinion of them if they don't follow you for sure yeah it has to um and if they don't respond i'm like you little yeah we'll see you, you little we'll I'll see you okay. in a couple months. I'll see you very <laughs> yeah, when soon. pads come on. OTAs are sweet. Weeks. Yeah, OTAs are cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do that, though, with signees, like people that sign, though, as well, not just yeah. Oh, yeah, draft so picks, mad like, love. He's out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. You got to, bro. You want to welcome. I mean, it, I just look at it from – I try to look through other people's eyes. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, if I was a free agent or if I was just getting drafted, like I remember exactly who drafted me or who hit me up first when I got drafted yeah. by the Raiders. It was Josh Morrow. He texted me. LD Bell kid grew up right down the street from me in Texas. He was the first dude, hey, anything you need, blah, 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 I got you. I was like, I f with him. That's you right. know what I mean? Immediately I was like, I like yeah. this dude. He took me under his wing. Guys like that, like that's what you want as a young dude because you don't know shit. Facts. And you're nervous. You don't know what the f You're going to the NFL. Yeah. It's a whole different a whole different animal. So, yeah, I feel like I just I just look through a different lens and try to, you know, make make the dudes comfortable, welcome them, and be like, all right, now it's, now it's time to work. I, mm -hmm. Every single time, I'm like, listen. Now it starts. Yeah. None of the other shit matters. Drafts over. You're not on, you know, on Whatever stage and wearing some crazy suit. Now it's like, no, it's time to work. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've been doing that for years now. So <clears throat> Condor Cartel, we have a very special guest today. A dude that has been slept on since day one. Mm -hmm. And slept others. And slept many people along the way. Fellow Michigander. The dude's a legend. Yeah. Uh, he's he's building his legacy as we speak. Main event of UFC 300, the biggest card in UFC history. We got Jamal Hill, Grand Rapids legend, coming in here today. So if y'all don't know, do your research. The man has had a hell of a journey. Our money is on Jamal Hill, big yeah. time. It's going to be a great episode. It's, it's going to be a great episode. Yeah, so I, I have a strong feeling that we're going to have a, uh, a new Condor Cartel fan favorite after this episode and after what we see on Saturday night. Oh, no doubt. No so. doubt. He's, uh, I mean, he's not a Raider fan yet. Not yet. But we're getting there. Yeah, yeah, we're he, making progress. He's uh, we're poaching. He's from we're Detroit, poaching. and a lot of people from Detroit, like Brogan, he's a resident in Detroit. Like, yeah. uh, they're loyal. They're loyal. Very loyal. They're I do loyal. respect what they, you know, Ohio. what they've done over there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Joe Rogan is as Michigan as they come. Yeah. You know? Resident. He doesn't Resident. use a GPS to drive around. Hey, who Detroit. do I ride with? What's that? The gang. On this weekend. Or on uh, yeah, Sundays. I was, was going to say, yeah, this weekend. This weekend, Jamal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a changes. He's yeah. a mercenary. <laughs> He's a mercenary. 100%. <laughs> Champ is in the building. Yeah. Who's winning? And I'm going to keep it light. We'll just go headline for now since we have Jamal in the building. I think Jamal Hill is going to win. Um, he's got all type of weapons. Hands, elbows, knees, can strike. He's got, like I said, a lot of weapons. I think a lot of people are sleeping on him. Obviously, Alex is a dangerous human being. Yes. And he's got a left hook from hell. And he's knocked out basically everybody that stood in front of him. So I think it's going to be a real challenge. And coming back from injury, but something is telling me Jamal Hill is going to win. And he's going to shut up a lot of people. I think he's going to turn to a superstar after he, he does this because this is the biggest card yeah. all time. I agree. Mm-hmm. If he goes out there, puts on a show, and knocks, excuse me, knocks out Alex Pereira, I mean, that's going to take him to a whole nother level. So I yeah, agree. I got Jamal it's not Hill. if, it's when. Yeah. yeah. I'm a, he's a dog. He's he a is dog. a dog. He's a dog. He's dialed in for sure. He looks great. I mean, he looks seriously, great. he looks great. I know people give him shit about the body and the frame and all that stuff. Could he fool like? me? Yeah. What the fuck they look like? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a great point. What, they talk about? <laughs> what do they look like behind their Twitter mm-hmm. fingers? Fuck. I don't think it goes past two and a half rounds. Ooh, I don't. I think he's going to fold them. I think it's going to be early. Um, I think they're going to each guy is going to get their chin tested. Yeah. No diddy, and uh, and we're going to see. <laughs> I, <laughs> We can keep or cut that. No, uh, just keep it. Yeah. Like and he's a Michigan guy. He's a Michigan guy. So I'm already beyond biased. Training camp. You've been obviously coming back from a big injury and shit like that. Um, I dealt with the injury this season. He's dealt with, I mean, ACL. What'd you blow? ACL, MCL, no knee. whole knee. He's gone. I mean, we've all dealt with it. He broke his hand. I mean, his la- or broke his ankle last season of his career. Like, how's that been and how's the journey been? Uh, it's just, it's been a challenge, but for the most part, it's, it's been, I guess, as, as good as it could be, you yeah. know, under the circumstances of everything, but, yeah, I just been, I just been taking it head on as a challenge and just trying to do my thing with that. Oh, uh, yeah. What would you learn about point. yourself, like, in that process that you didn't maybe know beforehand or just came to light? I wasn't appreciating the journey enough. I wasn't appreciating the journey enough. I needed to take take in the moments, take in even the small things and uh, appreciate them more, get them more, more, more love, more care. I feel that. I feel that. When you were going through your rehab and everything, we all know that the toughest part of getting back is the mental part. At what point did you know, hey, I'm back to where I was pre-injury? Uh, it wasn't the mental part for me. No? Yeah, it wasn't the mental part sure. for me. It was, it was, it was, it was the physical. <laughs> it was definitely the physical. Um, Achilles injury is a tricky one. Like mm-hmm. some days you'll feel like you'll feel like, all right, what am I what am I really waiting for? What am I you ready to push it and test it? But I had to listen to the doctors and I had to wait, you know, and just be like, This is a, this is a, you may feel like you're good, but we know yeah. like the, the the study, everything is everything is telling us that you you still need to wait. So that's pretty much where I was at. I was never mentally. I was just waiting for them to give me the green light. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Yeah. You appreciate even just like walking. Yeah. Like, you know what it's I mean? Little things. Small oh, that's small real. Shit. Hell yeah. Like moving around the house mm-hmm. and just being able to just have. I mean, I, that's at least what I went back to when I broke my ankle. But yours is a lot greater, like a greater scale. Being able to just stand up in the shower. Yeah. Hell yeah. I had to, well, for real. Yeah. I had, to, I had, yeah. to, had to get a shower. I had to get a. Uh, uh, had to get the one walker. of those little seat, seats oh, yeah. and shit for the shower. Had that's, to get one of them. Yeah, <laughs> you were just running any risk with it. It's, it's, it's weird around. sitting on plastic by your ass. And it, it was just changed. It was different. It yeah. was different. What's um? How does it feel though to be able to headline UFC 300? Like for you, I'm sure that's probably been a goal. And not your first time headlining, obviously. But uh, this is a big card. Is it the biggest card in your opinion so far, like to date? Oh yeah, hundred percent. This is the biggest and most stacked card that they've ever put together. Um, to headline it and just it's just a crazy, crazy honor. It just speaks to the to the fighter that I am because they know how I come whenever I'm uh, whenever they uh, call my name to fight. You know, I'm coming in with action, coming to knock heads, and I'm a I'm gonna put it on the show for the fans. That's a fact. And okay. definitely, you know, I mean, memorable performances is what I what is what I've started to become accustomed to bringing, and that's <clears> what they want. When you want a show that's gonna be memorable. 
dreams. For like a 300, you yeah. cost sweet dreams. I think it was funny because everyone gave Dana so much. We were with Dana Super Bowl week right mm -hmm. when he was about to announce UFC 300. We had him on the show, and people were giving him so much shit about, you know, holding off who's going to be the main, like the headline. But more importantly, like, you know, UFC 300 isn't that stacked. I'm like, have you seen the dude's fight? It was crazy. Yeah, it was so, crazy. Like, what do you so, mean? What do you want? I mean, it's it's insane, and I think it's kudos to you, man. And when we watch every time we're normally together when you're fighting, and I said it before we were on air, the money is always on Jamal Hill, baby, sweet dreams. And every we fought with the way you fight. We fought with your mentality. Money, I'd say that yeah. even if you weren't here. Yeah. But uh, just love the way you fight, man. I say you fight possessed. Yeah. Just because you're staring through, in my opinion, when I watch you, you're just staring through their soul. And uh, I f*** with it, man. I think it's it's awesome to see. And as, like, fight fans, that's what you want. You want mean in there that are going to just put a show on, like you said. Yeah, I'm I'm locked in, bro. I'm locked in on everything. I'm, I want to make them pay for anything, Amen. any mistake, any error, anything that I can, anything that I just can. Even if you don't make a mistake, if I can capitalize on something. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. You got, you got crazy confidence just hearing the interviews and me watching. Like, I remember watching you in the Apex. I remember when you knocked out Johnny uh, Johnny Walker, and I was the same type of deal. I'm sitting with Dana. I'm like, this every time I've seen him, he's clipping dudes early. And he's like, Dana said it to me. I'll never forget it. He's like, this dude, give him a couple more fights. He might He might be the next champ. And you knocked out Johnny Walker. Then you ended up, obviously, getting all the way to Glover, and you just walked through him. Where does that? confidence come from because like being an athlete i think that's more important than the physical part because at your level nfl level college level everybody's got talent you know what i mean but where does that that dog that i'm not gonna lose mindset come from i think a lot of it comes from uh preparation right and not just in the preparation i like i work my ass off like i work and i'm push i push more than I'm willing to push, yeah. you know, like like some drills, some drills I make them even harder on myself. Yeah. I always make sure I train at a, a little train with some adversity, and in that I know the feeling of it. You know, I know what it feels like when it gets hard. I know what it feels like whenever that voice starts telling you you want to quit yeah. and things like that. So I know, and I know that everybody's human. Yeah, you know, Thanks. and I know how hard it is to ignore that shit. So 100%. I. My my thing is just to be that big that 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 big terror like that to people. Especially when as far as the fighting goes, you know what I mean. I want you to feel. I want you to feel all that emotion and all the weight of everything on that. Yeah, that inner right. No, Everyone's got that inner. You just gotta yeah. quiet it down. It's the biggest battle. I mean, you could take the easy route, especially in in your sports, individual sport. Like you obviously have t <laughs> teammates, different people you train with. <laughs> <clears throat> but at the end of the day, you're the only one in there. Yeah, 100%. and I think that's the most important thing when it comes down to it. It's it's all mental. Yeah. It's where how far are you willing to push yourself and get to that point. So you obviously you grew up. You like you've been fighting. You started in 2017, right? Professionally, that was when I started professionally. Yeah, yeah, professionally. So like you haven't been in it for that long. How like how crazy and how world like of, how much of a whirlwind has it been? Like going from apex fights to you're the champ, then boom, you get an injury. Now you're on 300. Like, do you put that stuff into perspective? And like, because I know you talked about it even before, like talking about how grateful you are now, like you didn't appreciate it. What is your perspective now? Like when you're going into training camp, is it like, what is what is your main focus? You know, what is your daily focus? Are you focus on right now or you, you focus on Alex more than anything? Or is it just more of an internal battle and you battling yourself? Um, Honestly, there's been no internal battle with me. Yeah. It's been I, I don't doubt myself at all. Uh, the other thing is a little bit of a mixture of a mixture of both. Uh, I just because I know as a as a player, but I learned from one of the greatest D line coaches of all time, and you know guys talk about watching film and watching your opponent, watching your opponent, and his thing was like the opponent. It's all great faces at the end of the day. If I'm at my best then it doesn't matter what they do. Is that more of your yeah, perspective Yeah, that's 100% on how I feel. Yeah. yeah. I, um, you can't worry too much about what, what somebody else does because you can't control what they do. I focus a lot on – I'm more I'm more very self-focused just on the, on the, making sure my hands are in the right spot, making sure my defense is good, making sure my cardio is good. I remember every single bad feeling I've had in the fight. Yeah. Like one of the time – I remember the first time I got tired of the fight and I was like, oh, shit. 
Yeah. Like it's a lot. It's hard to defend my. It's hard. To, it's a little bit harder to defend myself now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or whenever I got put down in a fight, I didn't get up as fast. I was like, he's a little bit stronger than I thought he was. He's able to pin a little bit yeah. more. You know what I mean? I remember all these bad feelings. And the thing is, those are what I prefer. Those also. So as well as I as I look at an opponent. I remember all these all these things. I remember. I remember times I've been caught in a fight and all those things. So I work. <clears throat> I'm always constantly working on us. I love that. You know, so it's always an all around constant improvement. That's dope. Why do Why do you think people are uh, sleeping on you for this fight and this matchup? Because he's sweet oh, dreams, baby. Man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, I don't know, man. Maybe it's because Alex is a two. He's the two division glory champion, kickboxing champion, two two division uh, uh, UFC champion. He's just got hands of stone. He's just he's just great. He's uh he beat Israel out of Sanya, bro. He's just all these things. He's just larger than life, bro. How could I ever match up to that? Yeah, you hear it all. I feel it. How you could I ever? How, you how, could I ever how could I ever match up to that? Just you coming from all. just coming from. From Grand Rapids, Michigan. Grand Rapids, you know, Wyoming, little gem, little Wyoming, little Wyoming, gem. Michigan. You know what I'm saying? Little Come gem on. out of little Fun, gem man. out of nowhere. You know? Oh, yeah. I've seen Wyoming. I'm like, I'm from Michigan. I've never even heard of Wyoming. That's up yeah. there. Right? Yeah. I don't even know where show, the fuck show, that. Shows where's that? Yeah. yeah. Where's Grand Rapids at? Or Wyoming, Michigan? Why you want? Why y'all want to fight? Look, they, <laughs> you so, gotta no, show no, 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 no. I'm telling you, you put the head up and it's right there. Yes. Yes. I can't wait till the Michiganders see this and they're yeah. like. That needs Jamal's to be got studied. his hand the wrong way, <laughs> but I think there should be no hand included in any of this conversation. No, it makes it way easier. Just put the that. Put but it I don't know the the backward hand. That that's the first. I'm no, not also, oh, I've, 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 we questioned in my hand. Yeah, I mean we can't. Right, yeah. That's a Trump. Card. You got a good point. We'll give it to him. Yeah, you, can take that. <laughs> you mentioned questioning your hands, um, and you just talked about uh, how everyone pretty much builds up Alex. Yeah. And there, everyone, I feel like, says, you don't want to stand up with this guy. And you came out and said, I'm going to stand out. I'm going to knock his ass out. Because I feel like everyone's like, well, you need to take him down. When you fight Alex, somebody should take him down. It's MMA, blah, blah, blah. But for you, where do, you have the confidence to stand up with them. Where does that come from? Why do you feel that? And just kind of what's your approach to, to the Saturday's fight, going in and fighting Alex? Um, just what I see. I understand fighting. I understand the game. So, like, when I see... When I see like a Alex, right, and his is I'm not he's not built up to this big giant that is stored to me. He's just a man. He's a, he's a fighter. He's yep. been in the gym like I've been in the gym. I know what it's like to try to learn techniques, fix holes in your games, and all of those and all of those things. And he's been fighting for a long time. So at this point, we've seen what his game is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So just basically, y'all have y'all y'all watched his fights? Yeah. Hell yes. Y'all watched his fights? Yeah. Yep. What would you say? What would you say? I had to worry about left hook left hook and that's it honest is power but i think that just goes kind of hand in hand i say he's got pretty good leg kicks leg kicks yeah that's what they say he hides yeah, them well say it say anybody right what else good point i think he can get touched <laughs> now hold on now now against me what would you tell him to watch out what does he need to watch out for there's more than one thing I could tell you that. I mean, I didn't drop people. Left hooks, left hook, right, right hook, right hooks, right straights, left knees, left kicks, and right that. knees, yep. like right kicks. Yeah, you know, um, it's just like it's just like if you it's just like um, Dylan, like like just like in the NFL. Who would what do you think? Oh, you think somebody? You think somebody is just scared of somebody who who's got a, a hard bull rush or just maybe a mm-hmm. or maybe just swim or if somebody that's got the whole package. They got the whole package. You, know you definitely I mean? worry about. Well, you don't worry, but at the end of the day, you it's know you got bit, a little bit more difficult more to deal with. Yeah, for sure. So I, I, I feel you know that. Mean? Which is that's why it's crazy to me that everybody's like, "Oh, he's the better striker." He's like, he's like, it's like, listen to what y'all saying. Y'all saying all oh, that left hook. Y'all, y'all, you as as just a normal person that don't do this, yep. that's not in this shit, can pick out and say, "Left hook's coming." Yeah. Leg kicks coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, leg right. kicks coming. Left kicks coming. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And that's all you. That that's all you. Can, and that's that's better than what you can. What it, it's just crazy, bro. Because then, because every time, because every time, what do you say? Oh, 
What about with Jamal? What does he have to worry about with Jamal? Um, he's a he's a two division kickboxer. They started mm -hmm. talking about accomplishments. That wasn't me, because if like I said it before, I, if I was in glory, you probably not a two division champion, my boy. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. If yeah. I don't get hurt, you definitely not a two division champion in this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that all that accolade that like is is crazy to me. Bro. Yeah, that's crazy to me. Yeah, but it's still respect to him. You know, he's still he's a he's a beast. He's going. He gets in there. He he bangs. He finds a way to win. You know, but I'm not. I'm not. Make no mistake, bro. I I see. I see what it really is. Hell yeah, I fuck I with love that. that. I love it. Yeah, we love it. Yeah. How do you sit here and listen to that and not be so old? Yeah, yeah like was... we said earlier, no unit shaming, but we'll be there. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be there. Be there. <laughs> we will be there. Yeah, I love it. Cutting your own promo right here. I mean, you're getting it. No, so I guess the question should be, what should uh, what should Alex be worried about from Jamal Hill? You know, I mean, what do you feel like in this camp, if anything? But I know you're constantly getting better every day. You said you're tightening up holes in the game because you haven't been in the game as long as everyone else, but you're freaky, you're athletic. As long as who, uh, who's as long as everybody else? Like who? I guess maybe just like, I don't know, even like Alex, he mentioned like he was glory and then I don't know, whatever when, he did before. When did he start fighting in glory? I don't know. I don't know, but he looks like he's 40. So it just feels like he's... That's, 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 we thought, that's age. Yeah, that's, yeah. Age is different. Age than, is different than, than actual. Than so, when, so can somebody, y'all got somebody to look up? Y'all got, yeah, got information? Pull up. Yeah, pull up. we have let's to. See, let's look and, see, let's look and see when he started. When he, when he started... Uh, that's a good question. When he started in kickboxing. Do you feel like people, like, underestimate you because they have that thought process? Like, kind of what I just said, like, maybe you haven't been around as much? Yeah, or, yeah, 100%. Well, like, if you... In Michigan, uh, MMA wasn't sanctioned. Mm -hmm. yeah. It didn't get sanctioned until like 20, 2016. Damn. So That's for crazy. the most part, it was just like it was like some underground shit. Yeah. So I done showed up, bro, for real. But I done showed up to fights. We supposed to be fighting in 205. This motherfucker showed up. I was like, this dude's at least 230. Two <laughs> two two you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so it running. Take him out in the first round. Yeah. You know, it's like, it was, it was just, it was just like that. You just showed up and you fought. You know, that's why. And that's where like people are like, oh, bro, he doesn't. One, like we didn't know to care. We was practicing the fight and the win. Yeah, we, yeah. definitely. Uh, we got that. We got that. We got that year. Yeah, pull that shit up. <laughs> Sorry, uh, 2015 ish. That's when he started kickboxing. Yeah, 20, 2009 is when he started training. Glory, his first match, 2014. That's his first so, big winning. Glory. So, was, so he said he started training in 2009. 2009 we started training kickboxing. Okay. Interesting. Pull up. Pull up. Uh, Jamal Hill, Cage Digression 11. Cage uh -oh. Digression. That's just probably in a so Pontiac Kimbo. warehouse. Some beat the yeah. Yeah. The the yeah. The yeah. You ever, matter of fact, I was from Michigan. Well, you been to Traverse City? Yeah. Hell yeah. What? Clubs, was it Club Zero? See, I don't know. Traverse City like that. I was Ground a kid Zero, when I was like Club Zero or whatever like that. It's like the only event place that they throw in the shit whole at city. In yeah. the whole, <laughs> whole city. <laughs> Out on the Water, yeah. Yeah. Shit. That's, why, that's why I made my. That's, that's what. That's what I. That's why I made my MMA debut. My Damn. my first amateur fight. Well, you're Traverse right. City. Oh, you pull it up. Pull it up. Yeah, he's getting the facts. Uh oh. <laughs> Damn. No. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Damn. It's probably Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. No offense. Hopefully this works. Better. 2011? Yep. No. Even earlier? Mm -hmm. Damn. So huh. you've been around the game. <laughs> Only reason Mar I say that is because you're a hooper. Look, March. Davenport? March, my well, Davenport? Was, March 6th. March 6th. 2010 was whenever I had my first fight. Okay. Damn. I knocked the dude out in like 40-something seconds. Damn. I mean, I had my next fight. Uh I say about two months later, two months later, that fight lasted less than fifty seconds. Also, and the guy that I fought in that fight was he was the one who got me into MMA. Okay. Uh, then my third fight, that dude showed up twenty pounds heavy. We were supposed to fight at one eighty five. He showed up at two two hundred and five pounds, and I beat him in thirty seconds. Damn. So I've been like, so I didn't even know when he I didn't even know when he started. So he may have been training. At, 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 you know what I mean, since 09, yeah, but yeah. I've been fighting, like actual fighting, like going in, elbows, kicks, knees, yeah. grappling, all of that since 2010. 
15 years, bro. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy. They're not in more. That's the, that's, the, that's the thing. I never said anything before because, like, I like when people think, like, oh, yeah, I got the experience. I got the. Yeah. As soon as people say experience, I know I'm going to whoop your ass. Because you have, because for, for one, for one, you probably don't have more experience than me. And two, you've never experienced anybody like me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how could you be experienced? You, you, you're not experienced with this. Yeah. But a left hook, leg kicks. I've seen those you're before. I've seen, seen, say, you've before. seen those. I've seen some pretty good left hooks. He's got a good left. He's got a really good left hook. I've seen some pretty good left hooks. I've been in some boxing gyms. I've seen some stuff. Yeah. You know, so it's like, okay, bro. So from uh, 2010, <laughs> your first fight to it. now, headline in UFC 300, what has been your most memorable moment in fight? I'd say it was the Glover fight. It has to be the Glover fight. Yeah. That was when I became a champion. That was, mm-hmm. that was, and then not only that, Glover was like coming in, coming into the UFC. He was that matchup. I looked at it, it was like, okay, that yeah. might be, I might be, I, that one might be tough. Yeah. You yeah. know, he had, he had hands, he has good tight boxing, he has punches that can take your head off. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And he had that, he, he had the, he had, he had good wrestling, he can get you down, and he, he was good on top. To where he could, I mean, he could smash you and he could, I mean, suffocate you. He could submit you. Yeah. He could beat you up on the ground. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he had he had a he had a he had a variety he had a variety of options. He was very well rounded. Definitely. So yeah, looking at him was definitely one of those matchups coming in. Like, damn, I wonder how I match up with that. Damn, I wonder if I could. I mean, if he, if, I mean, how does my grappling match up? And for me to go in and completely dominate him in every realm of the game, Literally. it's got to be. Got 100%. And it's interesting too. He's training Alex. Yeah. yeah. So now it's it's interesting. You already know they're sitting in there trying to break the shit down, but they got to watch yeah. that fight over. It's two different styles, though. Four Glovers. Four Glovers. So I think they're gonna have to take two different approaches. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's it's a it's two different styles. I think I think he's definitely he's gonna come in and do and do his thing the way he does. I think do I think he'll make certain adjustments because he um hey, well he better. I mean, if he understands, if he understands the challenge, then he's, there's definitely adjustments that will be made. Definitely. But I flow like water, my friend. Yeah, <laughs> I love I flow it. like water. I man. love it. I like going off his question. Like, what? Obviously, you talked about Glover being, you know, seeing it before you fought him. Like, damn, he might be one of the ones that are going to be tough. Mm-hmm. Who's been your toughest fight so far in the UFC? I say my toughest fight has to have been a Santos fight. Santos. Yeah, just because uh, even like like heading into that fight, like my body was like banged up, like banged up at that time. Yeah. So it was more so I didn't really strength and conditioning was really like more so a no go. It was more so just just rolling, sparring, and then just like trying to stay, just just trying to get a trying to get a sweat in, just working out sweats, running, yeah. and things like that, just just to make it to the fight. Yeah, you know. Um, and then whenever we got to the fight, I'm like, okay, he's gonna strap. And then he just like fucking grabbed me. <laughs> he started <laughs> grappling. Yeah. He started grappling, so he brought a different element into it that actually kind of, you know, it, it, it had his it had his effects. Yeah. But for the most part, I was able to weather weather the storm, and you know, get the win. But it, it wasn't without his adversity. I feel like that motherfucker cracked me. I was not I was not expecting that motherfucker <laughs> like right hand to be that fast. Yeah. At the end he's of the first big, round, he's I, a big scary. I man. thought he was gonna. I, well, that's the thing, right? I thought yeah. he was. I thought he was gonna come forward more and actually like engage in like yeah. a in like a fight and like fight me. You notice most of the fight was me chasing him around the ring. Yeah, you know he yeah. wouldn't. He wouldn't engage. But what I noticed what he was trying to do. He's been around long enough. He wasn't trying to fight me, but then he was trying to um, just win the end of the round. Mm-hmm. Yeah, trying to make it uneventful. Let it be uneventful, yep. and then and just win the end of the, the round. End. Yeah, yeah. And which was at the end of the first round. That was the right hand. Yeah, all right. So that's why. Uh, yeah, the second round I came out a little bit more after him mm-hmm. in the uh, in the early <clears> go, <throat> and third round was when he started shooting for takedowns from the beginning. Yeah, hell so yeah. yeah. It was good. It was good. It was a good. It was a good little back and forth thing. A little little mix up of. I gotta know because people talk about it all the time, but is adrenaline dump? Is that a real thing? And just like like when you're in there fighting, like the adrenaline dump. So after you come back from the first round, like people talk about, 
yeah, man, he's gonna he's gonna have to get ready, gear back up for the second or third round. Like, have you ever experienced anything like that? You always hear like Rogan and them talking about that it. Sound like somebody getting tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, I'm getting tired. I get going. Yeah, I love it. I feel that. I love it. Slow cooker. Yeah, slow, slow cooker. cooker. No, that's real. I, I hear people say all the time, like they go in there, ah, guns blazing, and then by the second round they're f-ing gas. But I mean, if you're in shape, there's no such thing. You got a second win, a third win, and a fourth win. You gotta do what you can. Yeah. Uh, question. I know you're pro- you probably love answering this. You probably got it a million times. But um, after you beat Glover, and then you obviously had the injury, uh, and you relinquished the belt, um, did anything like Yuri relinquished the belt as well when he got hurt? I think right before you. Correct if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Did that play in, into account at all when you were making that decision? Like, do I give up the belt? Do I hold on to it? Yeah, hundred percent. Because. Um It kind of ensured the fact of, of like, you know, it, it gave me some clarity of what of what the situation was that I dealt with, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I could have been I could have been an asshole and been like, yeah, I'm gonna keep the belt. Yeah. I'm not giving up shit. No, mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Were you vacating. close to being that? One? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not vacating. Uh, no, because I was I was assured. I was like, I want title shot whenever I come back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Championship pay, my pay per view point, my pay per view uh, points. Yeah. And they were like, oh, yeah, hundred percent, we will hundred percent, we'll do that. You know, um, and we'll look out for you. We'll take care of you in the process of this uh, of you healing and things like that. So there was no reason for me to keep it. Only okay. reason, the only thing was like, oh, only thing I lost was being called the champion. Somebody else got a chance to be called the champion. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I could have done that. Now I'm in a bad way with. With the people I got to do business with, yeah. holding up that and then holding up them being able to keep this promise to, to him because he had the same promise that I did, yeah. And which is why he gave up the belt. Yep. So it was just, yeah, bro. For like, sure. For like, what? Why yeah. not? What, what, yeah, what's, 100%. What's the point? What's keep the, the point division of not moving. playing ball. Yeah, you play ball. This is a new segment we got. You know, we're called the Rush, obviously, but we got our Mount Rush. So today we're gonna ask you, what's your top four Detroit athletes of all time? Top four Detroit athletes of all time. Yeah. Now, is this like from Detroit or they got it like, are they like played in? Like, like, like I mean, played, played on a, yeah, Detroit team. Like, like Pistons. Play, had to play it in you could do Detroit both team. if you want. Yeah. Like, if it's a legend, I mean, you can't do whatever <laughs> you want to do. It's all you. Oh, man. <laughs> That's Isaiah cool. Thomas got to be on there. You got to put Isaiah. Yeah, yeah. You got to put Zeke See? on there. Uh, you got to put Barry Sanders on there. Got yeah. to. Oh, man, you got to put Calvin Johnson on there. I was just going to say, yeah. you have you to put, put Megatron. You got to put Megatron on there. I have to. The, the last one, the last one is, the last one is high. Bill Lambier. <laughs> Bill Lambier. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck out of here. Yeah. Legend. Yeah. yeah. Fucking Steve legend. Steve Eiserman. Hey. Oh, <laughs> I mean, What's that? No, 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 no. What's that one dude we have for the baseball for the t- Cabrera? Yeah, Miggy. Miguel. Yes. Yeah, Cabrera. Yeah, we might have to throw him on there. 100%. Oh, he's good. Because yeah. I don't even watch baseball and I know about him. Yeah. Yes. He was, I mean, arguably the GOAT, like one of the best hitters of all time. Yeah. yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, so we Before we get to the rush, man, I got a question because you hit on just keeping peace, like with your bosses, blah, blah, blah. What's it been like uh, working for Dana and just like that that relationship between the two of you guys been? It's been a cool. It's been cool, bro. Like, the like working for him has changed my life. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. He gave me built a. He built a. Uh, he built a company. They built a brand of organization that's that's thriving, and I'm thriving under it. So I mean, what what more? What more can I really say? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I haven't been disrespected. You know what I mean, in no type of way by him. So yeah, uh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I know people try to give him a bad rap. So all right, we got next segment. We got rush mail. So we do fan submitted questions. We'll, we'll ask you. I think we got about six of them right here. Um, so first off, we got Adam Dot Garf. Uh, <laughs> what do you think uh, is a better feeling, knocking someone out or scoring a touchdown? Somebody asked me this today, yo. Shut up. What? Somebody, Somebody asked did. me this today, yo. Dead ass. Uh, no, I was at the. Uh, I don't know who. I forget. Somebody did ask me this today. I was talking about. I was talking about like whenever I played football, but uh, I ain't gonna lie, I have to go and knocking somebody out. Has to be. You looked yeah. another man in the face and said, "Knock yeah. the fuck out." <laughs> yeah, facts. All right. Um, all right, we got uh, visual combos. <laughs> Damn. Ask him how he felt when his Lions ch- uh, choked at the NFC Championship game. 
Look at Elrond. Almost said. Almost. Almost said something. Almost said something. You can say sure. whatever you want. Almost like, said something, but I'm sure your mom's a nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> How did it feel to win the belt in enemy territory, Brazil? Do you think it would have le- felt better, better or worse, to win it on home soil? Tiny ass screen. For legacy, <laughs> it was dope. It was dope. You know, okay. what I mean? he went to went to his home country. Everything going for him and everything in his favor. You know, I came in on short notice. He had had a full camp, um, and just bro, like that Brazilian crowd was crazy in that nice. stadium, bro. Like Whoop, mama here! Whoop, mama here! That's all. <laughs> which means, which if you don't know, means you're gonna die. Yeah, you know, oh, like it's like these motherfuckers, like literally, they, they do throw it. stashes. I'm pretty sure dude stuck his tongue out. Of me. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was like, yo, this shit is wild. So yeah, to go in there performing and shut it down the way that I did, uh, that was, that was definitely. That's dope. Definitely. Like yeah, that. I feel like McGregor said they were chanting like the same shit to him or something similar. We fought Aldo. Aldo. Yeah. 100%. That's dope. But they were flipping me off all type of shit. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'll like, deal with y'all when I'm done. It was like this lady, dude, it was this lady in the crowd and shit I saying and she was like kind of just staring at me. I was like, oh, like, let's like wave him like, hi, she... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, whole expression just dropped and she just flipped me off. I'm like, I'm like, like, you too. Uh, <laughs> waiting for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You got better composure than the guys in this group. I can promise you that. <laughs> yeah, percent. <laughs> All right, uh, we got two more for you, uh, Mr. Morphin nine zero nine nine. How do you deal with adversity uh, and when people doubt you? Any advice? Just use it as motivation. I work harder in the gym. Make make sure I'm better better prepared and very prepared to. Shut it all down. Shut, shut it, it up. up. All right, uh, last one, Grim Raider. I'm not doing all the other letters and numbers there. Uh, what retired legend would you like to fight in their prime? Ooh. Ooh. Retired legend would I like to fight in their prime? Right now, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, and, it's, and it's just solely okay, based cool. off, of, off of today because he's really getting under my skin, D.C., uh-oh. DC come out of retirement. So I like to whip your ass. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good. What was the statement Good. that was just the straw that broke the camel's back on that one? Oh, what, oh, oh DC. Oh, DC. Yeah. What did he say? It wasn't a statement. It's the, he, he just cheats. He cheats at everything. He cheats at everything, and then he just claims to be good. All right? He just claims to be good. I whooped his ass in Madden. Like, I beat his ass in Madden. Go watch the clip. Put out. I was gonna say, yeah, like, wait, where's where this the clip going? that this <laughs> put out, and he's continues to tell people, "Bro, I, I beat him. I whooped you." I keep saying he's, he's, he's unbelievable. He's um, the basketball game where I got hurt. Yep, was playing against his ass. <laughs> He's playing no, against his ass. I did not know that. He tried to tell. He literally told people that he crossed me, <laughs> and that's what happened to my leg. Hurt you. I couldn't. I could not believe it. What? He, he'll stop at nothing. He'll stop at nothing. It's, it's despicable. Yeah. It's unacceptable. <laughs> despicable. And, uh, yeah, if I could have one guy come out of retirement and just whip his ass, it'd be easy. I fucking love it. That's, that's, that's a hell of a one to end on for the rest of I love you, though, OG. <laughs> <laughs> it's all love at the end of the day. It's all love. I know you're on a time crunch. Biggest fight of your life, bro. We're obviously, you know, we can gamble UFC. So I just want to say it's not the NFL. No, yeah. you are put money on you bro we're proud of you keep doing what you're doing um need to get you in a raider jersey we're gonna see you know how that goes but we respect the hell out of you bro you're a legend keep keep writing your story bro that's all we got appreciate you you, bro absolutely yeah absolutely yeah we're looking forward to it to the smackdown walk up in the light yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit like. Turn really him on God. Walk up in his shit like. Yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit like. Turn really him.